We're in Chicago, the Windy City, and behind me is the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, one of the great engines of capitalism. When business expands to global proportions, the smallest fluctuation in exchange or interest rates can make a difference of millions of dollars. And the same is true of commodity prices, weather variation, and a host of other factors that affect business and magnify as the scale of businesses grow. Steering a steady course through these choppy international waters demands skill, foresight and responsiveness, plus the use of derivatives to hedge against sudden unexpected changes. This is the service supplied to industry by the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, and Verizon Carry Ethernet is their technology of choice for delivering this mission critical service. Mission critical. It's a glib phrase, often associated with financial services, what does it mean in practice? I asked John Hart, CME's Director of Network Infrastructure, to give us some idea of the scale of his operation. The CME is the world's largest and most diverse financial exchange. I'll cite some statistics from last year. In 2006, the Chicago Mercantile Exchange transacted over 1.3 billion contracts with a total notional value of over 800 trillion dollars. To put it in perspective, the Chicago Mercantile Exchange will trade more notional value in one month than the annual dollar value of the New York Stock Exchange and NASDAQ in a year combined. John talks about Chicago and New York, but CME's business is truly global. The Chicago Mercantile Exchange is an international exchange. Um, we have points of presence in over 88 countries currently for electronic trading. What does that mean in terms of daily transactions and um, exactly what is being traded? Let's talk comparative uh, volumes and, and dollars for, for a minute, U.S. dollars, okay? Um, from a notional value perspective, we're clearing two or three uh, trillion dollars a day. Um, as far as the overall mix of products is concerned, the vast majority of those products are uh, in the futures market space. Um, the CME is also an applications solution provider for other exchanges as well. Uh, the Globex system that runs on this network um, not only runs trades for the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, but we also do provide electronic trading services for the New York Mercantile Exchange as well. So, and they're primarily focused uh, in the energy market space for us. Um, in addition to that, the CME is also an application solution provider for the electronic clearing side, which is sort of the banking function at the end of the day. That function uh, is provided not only for the CME, but for the Chicago Board of Trade as well. John mentioned the name Globex which is CME's electronic trading network. How big a part does that now play? The CME is an uh, exchange that bridges the gap between electronic and open outcry trading. We've been around for over 100 years. Um, over the past 10 years, we have grown our electronic trading system, the Globex system, dramatically to the point where it is now about 75% of our volume. In the past, there was only one way to do business fast enough, and that was via eye contact across a trading floor, also known as open outcry trading. Now CME's business reaches out across the United States and beyond, and the problem is how to maintain that level of service in a business where delays of a fraction of a second become a problem. I asked CME's Jim Messier if he could clarify exactly what happens when a trade is made on Globex. It depends on the, the, the customer and who it is, but typically, you know, with, we talked, I mentioned ATSs, so I'll talk about them. Basically, they've got computers hooked up on the other end of the network that's sitting there taking in all the, you know, market data, the quotes, basically, 
you know, running whatever algorithms they're running and deciding when it's time to make a trade. When they decide it's time to make a trade, uh, you're talking, if they're Chicagoland area, you're talking two to three milliseconds. It's in our front door. Um, our round trip out the door, it, back out the door, I think, is about 30 milliseconds. So basically a customer executes an order in like 32 milliseconds when they decide to make a trade, whether it's a computer program or it's a customer sitting on a front end. So how did they manage in the days before Carry Ethernet? Uh, we were primarily a frame relay ATM-based network. Uh, in terms of what were the challenges, the, the speed uh, that we could get out of the network from a connectivity perspective was, was challenging. Uh, the, our ability to scale it to meet the demand of the customers was uh, very challenging while trying to maintain the uh, cost points in which the uh, customers were paying. One of the main requirements of any new installation is to adapt to future demands. So what were the criteria for a new network? It had to be a scalable network, it basically be able to grow the, the network out to the customers uh, you know, in ranges from starting at 20 meg all the way up to 100 and even with the you know, very uh, forward looking gate capability out to the customer. It had to be reliable, basically zero packet loss, losing packets means you know, customers are losing opportunity to make money. Um, performance had to be very fast. The, our legacy network was probably 14 to 20 milliseconds here in the Chicago land area. Uh, customers, as they become more advanced, are noticing latency uh, within the, the network. It used to be all about the application, and, and now they're definitely a lot more sensitive about the network. So our ability to take that you know, connectivity latency down today to around 3 milliseconds in the Chicago area was a real good thing. Um, and customers notice. 20 milliseconds, that's just two one-hundredths of a second, had been causing problems in this highly mission-critical scenario. So CME were looking for a technology that met several key criteria. To minimize latency, to be highly reliable, and to be widely available, so that CME can offer a consistent service to its clients with as little geographical variation as possible. And fourthly, to be quick and simple to commission, and not keep clients waiting for installation. Fifthly, CAPEX, scalability, upgrade and OPEX were additional factors to consider. The solution they chose was Verizon's business EVPL service based on Carry Ethernet. So I asked Jim what it was about Carry Ethernet that persuaded him that it was the right technology. Uh, today our average bandwidth demands are 8 to 12 meg. Uh, one of the challenges that we were facing uh, as our business was growing, the bandwidth demand out to our customers was growing also. We were a frame relay ATM shop that was becoming quite expensive as we, as the bandwidth demands out to the customers grew, we were passing on you know, higher and higher costs to our customers. Uh, they were starting to get pretty vocal is probably an you know, easy way to put it. Along with the cost of the infrastructure that the CME had to maintain within our own data centers was growing and it was becoming quite expensive for the CME uh, expense side also. When we went out there and started talking to various carriers about you know, what are our next options, the uh, Metro Ethernet was probably more of a, a concept uh, at that point in time. But when we started digging into it, what we found was the uh, technology was a, a much simpler technology and, and that there were less parts in, in the carrier network uh, along with, you know, I should say making it a much simpler network to support, maintain, scale, um, all the good things that you'd want in a network. It made the, the, the network, you know, a much more reliable network because it had less moving parts. It was a much more scalable network and a much more cost-effective network that we could build for our customers. So, once the technology had been chosen, what happened next? So we went out there and started talking to you know, various carriers. Um, uh, we did a, a lot of work with, with Verizon uh, on developing a solution that would meet you know, the CME's needs along with our customers' needs. Uh, I would say we, we started that three years ago. 
Um, probably spent six months, 12 months working with them, talking to them about what we were seeing our customers needed in, in our business uh, and came up with the EVPL solution. It's worked very well for, I think, Verizon. I think it's worked very well for the CME. And I know we have a lot of happy customers out there. Michael Marcellin is Verizon's VP of Product Marketing. Why does he think the CME chose Verizon Business? There were a few factors that, that went into, um, into CME choosing Verizon Business. I think one of those was uh, the capabilities of our Ethernet portfolio. And, and remember, this was a few years back, and you know, having those capabilities at that time um, you know, I think uh, was significant. And, and, and you know, we continue to invest and have, have tried to be you know, a leader in the Ethernet space. And I think, um, I think you know, the CME selection of, of, of Verizon Business proves that out. And, and, and really, it went down to what level of performance we could deliver to the locations that CME uh, required us to be. And, and, you know, it's the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, so clearly we need to ha have a significant presence and infrastructure in Chicago, but also with, you know, key market centers across the U.S. and even across the world. Um, you know, I think that infrastructure that we had at the time and that we were continuing to evolve um, and, and still continue to evolve, I think was critical in, in, in helping them make that decision. They took the time to understand our business, which... We're kind of a unique business. We have unique demands. There are a lot of mission-critical networks out there, but there are very few that involve trillions per day and, and advanced customers that will notice uh, differences in performance. Uh, Verizon spent the time to understand that work with us, uh, which was really important. It makes it very easy to work with somebody who understands your business, the, de the demands being placed on you. So what's the actual service that Verizon is delivering? What we deliver to them primarily is, is a service that we call Ethernet Virtual Private Line, and that's a common infrastructure that we have not just locally here in, in, in Chicago, but also, uh, again, across their, their trading centers both in the U.S. Um, and in key centers uh, across the world. And so um, just that alone, being able to provide a common infrastructure, common technology, uh, a set of consistent capabilities that we can deliver to their, to their business um, and it looks and feels and acts the same way globally is extremely significant. And so what we're able to do with our Ethernet virtual private line is to deliver uh, separation of applications, separation of data streams, which is, which is critical uh, in helping them uh, both manage the flow of data um, and maintaining the level of security that they require. Um, and so it really was an ideal technological fit, I think, for the types of applications that they're running. And the scalability of the service is another critical factor. Well, I, th you know, I think w one of the interesting things uh, that, that we've seen over just the, the past few years with CME and this uh, implementation of their Globex uh, platform is they chose Ethernet because of its flexibility and scalability. And so whereas we started, I think, with um, pipes that were on average 20 meg, um, certainly some of the hub sites we have, you know, multiple gig E's, but, you know, on average, if you look across their broad network, you know, maybe, it's a, maybe it was a 20 meg pipe. Well, now, you know, the average is more like 40 with, with plans to go up to, you know, even up to 100. And, and it's that scalability of Ethernet, you know, not, not having to, you know, rip out infrastructure and put in new infrastructure, be, being able to, to move up as their um, volume and, and the level of partnerships that they have or, or partners that they work with um, dictates, um, you know, really kind of p pushed uh, them down the Ethernet path and has allowed us to really uh, meet their needs on a, on a, on a very uh, responsive basis. They were talking about growth rates of something like 300% a year and they want to over-provision by 100%. Can Verizon support that? Absolutely. I mean, part of what, part of what we're working on with, with CME is, is you know, making sure we understand their business plan and working hand-in-hand -hand with them to uh, make sure we're in the right places with the right uh, capacity to support their needs. And, and, and yeah, those, those growth rates of you know, 300% um, and the over-provisioning required from a you know, reliability and performance perspective, um, you know, we work hand-in-hand -hand with them to make sure that we can deliver on those capabilities. And I think thus far we have, and that's why you know, we're continuing to work so closely together uh, on an ongoing basis to support Globex. Security is another crucial factor in carrier Ethernet's suitability for mission-critical business systems. The finance sector is understandably reticent about discussing its security in detail, although the very fact that CME has chosen carry Ethernet technology could be interpreted as a vote of confidence in this respect. I was, however, interested to hear how CME was able to leverage the flexibility of Verizon's VLAN tagging options, which offer thousands of identifiers, so allowing specific information to be supplied on a demand basis. How significant is this in practice? Security in, in our business world is, is pretty important 
you know, customers don't want other customers seeing their trades. So VLAN tagging is one means of ensuring basically privacy as the transactions are flying through the carrier networks. You know, at some point in time, I would imagine uh, VLAN tagging interoperability is going to be a big thing uh, so that we can hand off from carrier to carrier. So I think it's going to become more and more important. Implementing this solution began in May 2005. So let's hear how the CME's clients responded to the change and how the rollout went. Oh, very well. Uh, we spent probably three to six months working on, uh, you know, testing it out in our labs to make sure that it met, met our uh, technical needs. And once we got the, you know, the first customers implemented and made believers out of our customer base, because we had our naysayers out there too, it was uh, pretty impressive. We converted well over 200 customers in probably six to nine months. So it went very well. CME didn't want to keep their customers waiting or for them to be at a competitive disadvantage. And this is where the availability of Verizon Business Carry Ethernet services became important, as well as the relative simplicity of Ethernet's installation. So that some 35 new circuits were installed each week until the first 220 megabit per second circuits had been linked in to one of several gigabit Ethernet interfaces at the various CME data center locations. Today, CME continues to add customers, with Globex carrying nearly 70% of its trading volume and connecting more than 600 customers. Carry Ethernet is so quick to install and simple to upgrade that CME is already in the process of upgrading all original circuits to double the bandwidth with upgrade intervals ranging from only 5 to 15 business days. CME is also planning further growth, adding additional circuits at 100 megabit per second bandwidth. The Chicago Mercantile Exchange is clearly pleased with the Verizon Business EVPL solution, but I wondered how their clients saw the new system. In particular, those naysayers that they had to win over. How did they notice the change? As the trading world evolves here, what we're seeing is a big migration to what we call ATSs, it's automated trade systems. Um, these type of, of customers are very sensitive to latency, and they have all the tools, the advanced tools in place that we as an exchange would have on their end. So when there's any variance in, in latency, two to three milliseconds we're talking here, they are picking up the phone and calling and saying there's problems. So they, that's how they notice. In a business where every millisecond counts, it raises the question, where do we go from here? Microseconds? Picoseconds? Or are we up against relativity? and the very limitations of the laws of physics. How does John Hart see the way forward? I think to answer that question, you have to look back a little bit and then where we are and, and look forward. A um, hundred years ago, when the exchange began operations, it, it was a fairly small and local entity. Over time, as we brought more products online, some of them financial, um, those products have become more global in nature. Um, Ten years ago, the vast majority of our business was done on a trading floor, an open outcry environment with people who were um, basically shouting and signaling back and forth. Uh, with the launch of the second generation of the Globex environment, we began to fairly quickly move towards an electronic trading environment completely. Today, 75% of our volume is done on computers on a computer network. Um, that progression has been fairly consistent and over time our expectation is the electronic side of the business will continue to grow and grow substantially. From Verizon's perspective, CME represents a satisfied client and a promising extended partnership lies ahead. But it can also be seen as a successful experiment demonstrating how carrier Ethernet, a relatively new technology to the financial sector, lives up to its promise for mission-critical systems. So what were the lessons learned by Verizon and where next for their business plans? Well, you know, again, from an infrastructure perspective, we've deployed um, infrastructure to support CME and others, and, and we will certainly use that um, for other clients. 
um, and then you know the, the, the technology of Ethernet virtual private lines is something that we have been able to um, have been able to work with other financial and other customers to, uh, to, to to leverage in their business. I think really what it comes down to is the flexibility that we have um, in, in being able to support um, not just you know the separation of applications, but then also you know monitoring performance of, of, of different applications is critical. Certainly critical in the financial sector, but critical to other businesses as well. I mean, even if it's a a business that is just managing some mission critical applications internal to their enterprise. Um, you know, it, it's it's a capability that has really come of age on, on Ethernet um, and, and one that I think you know more and more we're hearing demand from our customers on. Whatever options are available, we're exploring and Verizon's definitely one of our uh, first people we call to see what our options are. Mm -hmm.